Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your global weather extremes for Friday. And we are tracking four tropical storms. Two of them are hurricanes, two of them are typhoons. In fact, one is a super typhoon at the moment. But we kick off with Hurricane Larry. Now, when we recorded this, which was Thursday night in Bermuda, and here is Bermuda right there, this is where Larry was situated. Category two, right on your doorstep. But the modeling has been very accurate, showing that the storm would be just offshore. Now the damaging winds are really in this zone right here, the yellows and the oranges. That's just off the coastline. So while you'll be hit with gale force winds and very big waves, the storm, the main part of it is just offshore. But this video is all about Friday. So this is where it'll be on Friday. It'll be well north of Bermuda. So here is Bermuda and here is Larry. Now Larry will be falling apart at this point, going from being a hurricane to an extra tropical storm or post-tropical as it moves into Canada. So St. John's likely to get a burst of these tropical southerlies coming through and a burst of wind and rain. So severe weather brushing the northeastern side of uh, North America, getting into parts of Canada and also around the northeastern side of the US. And then over on the other side, we've got uh, Olaf, which is also a, a borderline hurricane around category one as it comes into the Baja Peninsula over there. So this is the tracking. Start with Larry. So it was category three. It's dropped back to two, which is still serious and now dropping back to category one as we go through the next 24 hours. It will then fall apart around about the Canada area and becomes post-tropical or extra-tropical and that's when it falls apart. Over on the other side uh, we've got the other system, Olaf. Now this is borderline between category one uh, hurricane and a tropical storm. Either way, one to keep an eye on because it does have damaging winds and heavy localized rain but it is short-lived and it's only really affecting the Baja Peninsula. And then over here we've got another system. This is just a tropical depression that moved through. It was a tropical storm when it made landfall named Mindy and it came into the Florida panhandle falling apart as it crosses over Florida, now a tropical depression and it should just fall apart. Um, the energy from Larry sort of taking away some of the energy for Mindy, so likely to just have that system fall apart. Now let's move over to the Western Pacific. We've got two storms here, a super typhoon and a typhoon slash tropical storm. This one's a bit more borderline. The good news is this one's likely to fall apart, but for the Philippines and Taiwan, this one here is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Now I've had a discussion about the names of the typhoons with someone on YouTube and he was talking about the local name given. So at the moment, Cantu is also called Kiko for the Philippines. I was going to start naming them locally, but it actually does get quite confusing. Uh, each country does name storms differently. So we're going to go with the international models because this is an international video. So we will try and use local names where we can, but for the most part, we're probably going to be using the international names given by the international agencies. And these maps here are partially made by the US government and also IBM, who we're a business partner with here at Weatherwatch. So Cantu or Kiko, this one is a serious super typhoon. Super typhoon as it brushes the northern Philippines. Now it weakens a little bit as it moves into Taiwan, but still it's a major storm. Winds at the moment averaging 249 kilometers an hour and gusting over 300. In miles an hour, basically halve that and add just a little bit to it. The storm weakens, weakens a little bit as it moves into Taiwan. Still got gusts of 233 k's, gusting 282 as you move into Saturday. So this is a serious storm to keep an eye on. It'll also brush eastern side of mainland China. As we take a look at the other storm, Konsun, this one's borderline between a tropical storm, likely to grow a little bit into a typhoon as we go through Friday, but hopefully as it makes landfall, it'll be back to a tropical depression. Now don't underestimate that. That could still drive in a lot of rain, landslides, flooding, issues like that, especially in places like Vietnam uh, and maybe even over towards Laos. Okay, so let's take a look at other lows, not tropical ones, but just other lows and highs around the planet. And one of the big lows focus, to focus on here is around the Aleutian Islands and Alaska, part of the world I would love to get to at some point, especially the Aleutian Islands. Uh, we've got this big storm here. They are always, not always, but very often in this part of the world, affecting the northwest of Canada and also right down into Seattle. You know, it's always, well, always raining in Seattle. It's not always raining in Seattle, but Seattle and Vancouver get a fair bit of rain and cloud, usually from these 
offshore storms. And on the other side, this is the largest high pressure zone in the northern hemisphere over Greenland and northern parts of Canada. There are people living right up here in Alert, but also around some of the islands. I would love to visit um, Resolute Bay. Hello to anyone who lives there, not many, but there are a few who live in Resolute Bay in Canada. Um, also, we've got this low pressure zone around the United Kingdom. It's also affecting uh, a little bit of uh, Norway and Sweden as it moves through over the next day or two, moving into these sort of northern areas. Uh, it's not an overly aggressive system and it's not going to have a big impact on temperatures, although temperatures are down a little bit in uh, the UK at the moment. In the southern hemisphere, we are focusing on a very large high pressure zone, oops, excuse me, let's we'll go back to that, uh, in this area here from South Africa and over right across the Indian Ocean to Australia. So we're seeing uh, these big high pressure zones actually driving in a cooler airflow along the eastern side here and Madagascar also getting that cooler southerly coming through and the same story over there in Perth they're getting a bit of a cooler wind out of the southern ocean. As we take a look at low pressure now in the southern hemisphere you can see that this zone from New Zealand all the way over to the southern tip of South America is showing the stormiest zone at the moment on earth much larger than the Hurricanes and typhoons are taking up, but the wind speed's not as strong as those tropical storms. Temperatures now, let's take a quick look at the uh, more sort of bigger highlights going on around the world. With low pressure over the United Kingdom, Manchester's temperatures are down a little bit, down to 21 degrees. You were up around the late 20s a couple of days ago. So temperatures have dropped, but it's not likely to go much more below that. Fairly hot in Madrid, you're talking about 74 Fahrenheit or getting close to 30 degrees Celsius. But the Western Sahara, 47 Celsius, 116 degrees Fahrenheit will probably take the cake as being the hottest place on our maps. As we take a look at uh, the areas where that large low was spinning around in this area here, Anchorage got a high of 15 degrees or 59 Fahrenheit. San Antonio, I haven't been there, I've been told I have to go there. 36 degrees centigrade, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the, uh, on the other side of the screen, up here in Greenland, minus 35 degrees through the interior, minus 31 Fahrenheit. You're getting around that point where Celsius and Fahrenheit are almost the same. And in the Southern Hemisphere, Durban has got a high of 23 degrees, so you'll be feeling that slightly cooler southerly change coming through. And over on the other side, Perth also has a cooler southerly out of the Southern Ocean, only got a high of 18 or 65 Fahrenheit. Darwin, much warmer, 33 degrees, lovely and tropical up there. Let's take a look at some of the bigger rainfall totals. So we've got that low pressure zone moving in across the United Kingdom, but it is also affecting some parts of Norway, Denmark, um, and also into Germany, where I think we'll be seeing some heavier falls. A separate system down here, although slightly connected, drives in some heavier rain for the south of France. Over into North America, the remnants of Larry moving through, bringing some bigger rainfall totals uh, into parts of Boston or Massachusetts, into Maine, then into Canada. Nova Scotia's got some heavy rain. So does um, Newfoundland and Labrador. And as I mentioned before, St. John's getting some of the leftovers. You'll be, be getting some strong winds as well as that rain that will eventually move in. And around um, North America, Central America, we are seeing some very heavy rainfall totals caused by the usual thunderstorms at this time of the year. South of Mexico City got some of the bigger totals, but we're also seeing heavy rain across El Salvador and all the way down Nicaragua and to Panama. Fun fact about Panama, the Panama Canal goes from southwest to northwest. So not everybody knows that, or so I should say southeast to northwest. Whereas when you look at that map I just showed you before, if we can go back to it, um, here's Panama, you sort of feel like it should go that way. But uh, there you go, there's a geography thing for you, that uh, the canal actually goes from southeast to northwest. Side note for you, we've also got a bit of snow falling around the planet at the moment. Most of it is falling up here around Russia. There'll be a little bit moving around into parts of Alaska. This is where you know Anchorage is, so we'll be seeing some snow around those southern mountains. But the bulk of it is over here in Russia, where you're getting about 50 centimeters of snow over the next day or so, around about three inches. And in the South Island of New Zealand and the central plateau of the North Island, heavy snow, 50, 60, maybe even 80 centimetres on the tops of the mountains coming through over the next 24 hours with another surge again 
coming in around Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next week. Typical spring weather. And from snowy maps to, well, fire. <laughs> this map here shows all the fires that are burning around the planet at the moment. Uh, the areas that are in yellow are the most frequent ones or the more recent fires. The thing that's really depressing about this map all the fires burning across the Amazon. Uh, that to me is just very depressing to see our you know, largest rainforest covered in fires at the moment. Bit depressing. So let's end on something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more positive. Hurricane Larry and the swells being generated. This is from earth.nullschool.net. And thank you for the animated maps that they provide us with. You can see the swell here, big swells in the middle, rippling out, going all the way up into Canada, all the way to Florida, all the way down into Central America, and all the way across, almost reaching Africa. I mean, these swells are basically coming in to the northwestern corner of Africa. Uh, so this is a giant system, really, when you think about it. So very glad to see Bermuda on the outer edges of it. I hope everyone in Bermuda is safe and well and uh, the next 12 hours or so aren't too bad. That is all from me. Have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday uh, New Zealand time. That is Sunday night in North America. Until then, please visit weatherwatch.co.nz for more information in New Zealand and Australia and our IBM business partners at weather.com for everywhere else.